Hi. When you open up the GI rig file that you downloaded from the site, um, all you're going to see is this one null. And uh, I found that the easiest way to use this rig is to go into your content browser. And I, you can see I have third-party effectors, my own effect, uh, my own rigs. And I would go in there. If you don't have a place for it, just create a folder. Um, say new preset library and I'm just gonna call it GI rig you can call it whatever you want and then just take this and drag it right in there and that way whenever you need to use it you can go right into that content browser into that folder double click this and it'll go right into your scene so I have a scene here let me just open that up and we'll work with the GI rig. This uh, has no lights, nothing, just camera, some objects that all have the same material applied. Do a quick render and that's just the default light. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to my uh, content browser and we'll just double click the rig right into the uh, object manager. And if I do another render, eh, not great. So come over here what we want to do is anytime you use the GI rig, you have to use ambient occlusion or it just looks terrible. So with the ambient occlusion, okay, so we're starting to get uh, nicer results. You notice there's no specular uh, or anything else. So if we go into the GI rig controls, um, you can come down here. As long as the specular is turned on, on your material and adjusted then uh, this works turning on the specularity here and so you can faintly see I'm gonna crank this up a little bit and now we have a little bit of specular and the specular is going to be controlled by the specular in your material so however you have this set uh, is how it's going to appear all this is doing is creating a, a light that that adds that specularity and uh, you can move this I'm going to turn this up just a little more and then you can move this with these controls to put get the specular kind of where you want it um, so so I'm going to crank that way down zero these. Now if you right click on these double arrows it will zero these uh, coordinates out. So we're just going to leave it there. Do a render. Okay so let's go into the uh, other controls at the top here. I'm going to roll this close and roll this close for now. And here we have, um, because of the way this is built, there's a set of basically top lights. So you think of that as your overhead light. Then there's middle lights, which are like fill lights, so to fill in around. And then you have bottom light control. So let's just go in here, and I'm going to crank up that a little bit. Um, give it a little more highlight on top. And I think... What I want to do at this point is I want to add in a light, and I would always suggest adding at least one light in. So I'm going to set this to area and oh, area, and set the shadow to area. And I'm just going to pull this out here, uh, maybe like that. And then let's render and see what we have. And so it's really burning out. So let's go back. Now, I will say this about the GI rig. This, these uh, defaults that it comes in with, even those, like when you can use this control for this amount of light, 40 is a lot because it's, you're looking at a whole bank of lights that you're controlling. So it's not like using just a regular light. So, okay, so we've got kind of a, a nice thing going on there, and we might even want to move that specular over to the other side. Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of playing around with. Okay, so there we got a nice little secondary specular. Okay, 
So let's get in here and start oops, start playing with these colors. So I'm going to crank this up, get a little crazy with the colors. Um, and so you can think of it as, you know, how do you want the scene to be lit uh, as far as is this, you know, do you have a lot of uh, overhead light? Uh, you know, what is the coloration you want to the overall scene? And um, change that in there. So we're getting kind of a nice orangish, a warm cast to it. But let's say you, you want something more dramatic. And so let's take this and uh, think of it maybe a night scene or something. We'll take that and put it in there. And I'm going to crank this way down to about three. And then put that there and crank this down. And I'm going to bring this lower light up. And let's see what we've got there. So we've got an interesting glow thing going on. But it still really doesn't look the way I want it to. So I'm going to turn off the light, the, uh, oops, the uh, area light we placed in there. And now, you know, we're getting some pretty cool results with that. So if I crank this up a little bit, maybe add in a little more of this light. Maybe let's make it a little bluer. <clears throat> and pretty quickly, you've got some pretty cool results um, and then if you wanted to turn your area light back on maybe crank it way down give it a little bluish cast like a moon and renders pretty quickly a lot of that render time is just the uh, ambient occlusion but you need it I mean you have to have it or it just really doesn't look very good so let me go in and show, I'm going to crank this back up so we can have some light in the scene and take these back to some defaults. Now, you can't click the default if you right click, or uh, yeah, right click on these two arrows. It does not set to the default that the rig came in with. It sets to a default uh, that's basically hardwired into the, into the software. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple other things. I very seldom get down into these other controls. But if we roll this closed, I do want to show you these um, reference circles, okay? And um, we have to, I'm going to put these on. And you're going to see them in here. I'm going to click out of the camera. And I want to click out of this one background thing I created. And so you see all these um, nulls and what these nulls do let's turn that camera off <clears throat> and what these nulls do is give you some idea of what the lights what color the lights are and you notice there's lots of different color lights and I did that for a reason because I didn't want just you know when you go in here and you set these colors I didn't just want this pure uh, blue let's just set it to a darker blue I didn't want it to come in just as that dark blue. And you can see that when I adjust that, these are, are different. And you can even adjust the randomness uh, much more down here. Um, you can change the seed, so those change. Um, and you can change how this is, like there, how, how the, how the uh, randomness is applied to these. And and then you can change to all kinds of things. Like I said, I normally don't go in here much, um, but all of these things change. So if you want a more even colored light, you would probably drag that minimum up to uh, 100%. And then the more randomness you want, you drag that down. So you even get... Um, in this top, you even get some yellow lights in there. And, and of course, you're combining in light. So, you know, the, the more the varied color, the more varied colors you have, the, the closer you're going to get to white. So anyway, and, and there's a randomness control for each of these settings. So the middle lights, um, let's go in here and you can start to see they all go to white. Okay, but you pull that down. 
You can even make them go darker in here. And of course you can change how the randomness is applied. Okay. And of course there's a, a similar one uh, for the, let me pull this up. Uh, let me, the, there's a similar one applied for the bottom. If I could just get it up there. I think what I have to do is go up here and close this. Yeah. And so here's for the bottom controls. Oh, that's the bottom lights. Here's the bottom random randomness. You see it's quite quite random in here right now. And then if you drag this up, it will take it all to white. So you could, if you really just wanted like a solid colors for everything, um, you could do it that way. And then there's a strength parameter here. So that just gives you, like I said, I very seldom go into those. But if you wanted to fine-tune things, um, you certainly can. And of course, these are null, so they wouldn't render. But I don't like them in the scene, so I just turn them off. So let me show you um, one last thing. Uh, I did want to point out that each of these uh, top light control, middle, and bottom light controls have the uh, possibility to add a shadow. Um, I only use that as a last resort to fine tune. Uh, I like to get my shadows usually from a, a, a an added light, but it certainly uh, it certainly works. And you can adjust the um, the shadow density as well as the shadow map. Uh, these are set you know um, fairly high, and if you notice your shadows are getting blotchy, then set them up higher. It will add a little bit of render time, but uh, but it's not that bad. So I want to show you this exclude uh, feature. I'm going to go back into my camera here and uh, I'm going to render this the way it is. Okay, pretty much the same as it was. But now I want to turn on shadows on the top light only. So we turn on shadows and we start to fill in. It gets a little nicer and like I said you can adjust these shadows. Uh, to make them uh, darker, but that's but that's okay. So now I want to add in an object. I'm going to add in a cylinder. I'm going to make it about 3,500, and we'll make this about 1,500. And uh, the caps. I'm just going to fillet those so that we don't see big. Okay. So if I render now. You notice that we've had a huge shift in the color. And um, most of the color now is actually coming from this bottom light, okay? And, um, you know, we had that nice bluish looking scene and now we've got this yellow. And that's because this cylinder is influencing a lot of the upper lights. So if you go into your rig with that set to exclude and you drag that in there, we should be back to our nice blue scene. So that's about it. It's pretty simple to use and um, and I you know a lot of times I get in there and I start playing with all these things and I can't remember what I've changed and, and it's just a big mess and unfortunately you can't just uh, double click these things back to the default but the nice part is you can go up here and you can just double click a new one into your scene delete the old one. So if we hit render See, we're pretty much back. We got some blue light left in this. Take that out. And we're pretty much back to our starting spot. Uh, I want to put in these top shadows again. And it looks like maybe, yep, maybe the occlusion is turned off. And I'm going to go back to these shadows. So let's hit render. And now we pretty much. have it back. And now these shadows are influencing this a lot. And so at this point you would want to um, take this density down quite a bit. Oops, I, oh, I see part of the problem too is I have these shadows on. Okay, so let's take that back up a little. All right. So 
you, I will show you one last thing that I will do from time to time on a scene, and this scene really doesn't need it. There's so few objects, and, and actually these little shadows and touches are nice, but if you run into a, a situation where you have, and I just created a new material here because I want to put this just on this cylinder, which is my background, um, like environment object. Let me turn this off. If you run into a problem where you have lots of objects and overlapping and, and all of that, um, sometimes I'll go in and actually add just a little bit of luminance. I want to make sure it's the same color. I mean, you can use a different color if you want to have like a cool, warm tone. Um, and of course, you want to crank this way down. Now, you're, we're not going to really see any difference here. But like I said, on complex scenes, like the scene, uh, like the render that I have at the head of this tutorial, that uh, image with all those objects and everything, I actually had to add in a bit of luminance into uh, the material. And what that does is it, it adds almost like a little fill light in the darkest of areas. But, but, these, but this is so nice to begin with, it, it's really not showing up. But it is a nice little trick to use. Um, when you want to um, just get a little extra fill light in there. So uh, that's about it for the GI rig. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some nice results. And like I uh, said in the little blurb about the tutorial, I still do use global illumination, mostly for illustration uh, and still images. But for animation, uh, this has been, become my go-to rig. And what's nice is you actually will, it, it doesn't give you the same results as Global Illumination. And on one project uh, I used it on, uh, it actually gave me a better result. Uh, I don't know why, but it did. And, um, and the render times were still long because it was very complex. But um, it gave me a nice result, no flicker, no, none of that. And uh, none of the luminosity files. So anyway, um, hope you have fun with it. And um, thank you for watching.